Hey guys, it's Eric again from StarCraft2Tactics.info. Just want to go over another one of my favorite strategies um, for the Terran. This is something that I've been getting into recently. I call it the Terran Infantry Steamroller. Uh, the reason I call it the Steamroller is because, well, you just sort of roll your opponent down. At first he resists and he gets all mad and he tries to push you back. But after a certain point, you just kind of keep pushing until he's, you know, dead. Now, what's interesting about this replay is it actually starts out as a double Reaper Rush. Me and my partner, Joan, here decided we're both going to Reaper Rush, and we're both going to take out the same opponent, and trying to get one of them knocked out early. Really good strategy, by the way. Doesn't always go over exactly as planned. In this case, we had to bring in some support in order to take them down. But by the time we weakened their economy so significantly that we were just overall head and shoulders above them. You can see here... 3 minutes 48 seconds into the game, already got my first two barracks up and got, um, got ghosts, or excuse me, reapers on the way just to go. So yeah, definitely looking pretty strong here already. Uh, my partner Sir Joan coming in and he's, he's backing me up, he's got everything ready to go. The reaper rush actually goes really well as far as economy destruction. Now you don't necessarily have to start out with a reaper rush if you want to play the steamroller strategy, you can start out with that from the very beginning. I just went with the Reaper Rush strategy because this map has these sort of like, you know, multi-level areas that are really cool and interesting to manipulate. So anyways, we set him in here, this guy that I'm looking at right now, this Zerg player, uh, which in retrospect was would probably have been a better idea to go after the Protoss just because, well, um, I mean, aside from these Photon Cannons, would have probably go, been better to go against the, um, the Protoss just because the Zerg tend to use queens and stuff like that, and it can be a little bit annoying. Queens are pretty strong to fight against. They usually rip Reapers apart. Anyways, so here we are getting into position. What we, what the goal was here, we wanted to take him out if possible, but, um, you know, we weren't going to force that. We weren't going to... We weren't going to necessarily need to do that for our strategy to be successful, you know. So we, you know, we jumped up here, we started attacking, and, you know, you can see here we're definitely doing some decent damage. I was aiming for the hatchery, to be honest with you, because that, to me, that, that to me really sets their mineral flow very far back, because they have to do a lot more now to repair all the damage. I probably should have just stayed. I might have been able to take it out. But I didn't want to risk the Reapers because they can keep harassing for a while. Now, one interesting thing did that the Zerg player did that actually gave me an advantage was he expanded early. Now, when you expand early, you take a lot of risk. In this situation, the risk is that he just didn't have that many units to defend with. He really just had this queen. Uh, everything else was, you know, pretty much his, his friend helping him out. You know, didn't really... Didn't really uh, go over too well for him overall. I managed to significantly cripple his mineral flow. So yeah, really just you you want to you don't have to start out the strategy the same way I did because this isn't even the steamroller part of the strategy. This is more of a reaper rush here that you're observing. I'm really just trying to keep their, their mineral flow stunned for as long as I can so that I can bring in reinforcements later on. Now see, here is where we get into the steamroller strategy. Uh, once I decided that the reaper rush wasn't working, I decided to just start bringing in massive amounts of units, and I had been dropping mules like crazy, so I had the resources to quickly build up four barracks, and each of them is going to get an attached, uh, an attached uh, reactor in order to build massive amounts of marines. So I'll go ahead and watch here. Now this is a this is a really good strategy, honestly. The next thing I'm, I'm going to do, if I haven't done it already, is, uh, oh, look at this. I'm harassing uh, Mr. Protoss. So this guy Vlad over here, he's pretty upset. His mineral flow is more or less crippled. Well, I wouldn't say crippled, but it's definitely hurting. You know, he's trying to get rid of me. He's he's pretty fed up with me. You know, he's, he's building all these photon cannons like crazy, which is just hilarious to me that he surrounds himself like a super turtle. 
pretty retarded in my opinion, was honestly a significant part of why he got defeated. So next up, I'm just sending in lots of Marines. You know, my, my partner was actually trying to do the same thing. He sent in a ton of Marines. And I'm just trying to back him up. You can see here, these Marines go down, you know, and he thinks he has the upper hand here, and then more Marines just sort of come in. Which is why I call it the steamroller strategy. Because you just, like, no matter what happens, you just keep sending in units. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what happens to these Marines. They all die. They all live. Doesn't matter. Keep sending in units. You can see here I got all these barracks up and running, training multiple Marines at a time. I can bring in eight Marines in the amount of time it normally takes to produce one. That is freaking cool. That is just cool. And then boom, my partner's doing the same thing. Which is just awesome. Which is freaking sweet. He's basically doing the same thing as me. You know, it's on a slightly different build. He's more focused on Marauders, which is which is totally fine. You can definitely pull off Marauders just as well. But I was just focusing mainly on Marines. From this point on, it's basically just a downward struggle for uh, the enemy team, to be honest with you. They're just sort of biting it. You know, they're, they're not really able to handle this many units. And they know it. And you can tell that they know it because they're sitting in here walled in their base, desperate, you know, without even a prayer sort of hoping and praying that, you know, all these units somehow aren't going to just absolutely, utterly, completely destroy them. At this point, the Zerg player pretty much drops out, I believe. Yeah, at this point, he's gone. He knows he's pretty much been steamrolled, and he's just like, whatever. <laughs> the power of this strategy is really just in numbers and sheer volume. I mean, we, of course, we uh, we have to take out the Protoss and say, using the same strategy, because that's all we have left. You know, we can't, like, send in Void Rays or use Siege Tanks. We just don't have anything like that. We really don't have time to wait for them. So we just gotta keep sending in Marines and Marauders until they're just overwhelmed, you know? Alright, at this point the Zerg base is all cleared up. We're bringing in the last of our units just to take out the Protoss. No big deal, just a matter of numbers, like I said. I mean, this guy can hold out as long as he wants. He can turtle in his shell as long and as hard as he wants. But the fact of the matter is, eventually we're just going to steamroll him just like we did his partner. See, I would have quit at this point. At this point, it's just, uh, you know, at this point, it's just sort of pathetic to watch. But yeah, really, the key to this strategy is just massive, massive numbers. You know, that's all you're doing. You can start with a Reaper Rush if you think you can finish them off early. But if not, you know, you switch to this. It's a great alternative, and you can really keep the pressure on them constantly. So that is the, uh, that's the Terran Infantry Steamroller. Hope you guys enjoyed.